In this video, we'll learn how to change the color of parts of an image in Krita. This includes changing the color of eyes, the color of objects, and the color of clothes. We'll learn three different methods to achieve this plus a few tricks. Start by opening the image that you want to edit in Krita. Add a new paint layer. Change its blend mode to color. It's worth noting that there are multiple blend modes called color in Krita. Each blend mode uses a different method to separate a color into three components. We have hue, saturation, and intensity. Hue, saturation, and lightness. Hue, saturation, and value. And hue, saturation, and luma. This checkmark means the luma method is in the favorite blend modes, which appears at the start of the list. Essentially, what the color blend mode does is replace the hue and the saturation of the image while keeping the third component untouched. This means if the bottom layer has pixels with a color that has 50 luma, then the resulting color after blending will always have 50 luma. Let's try zooming into the image to change the color of the eyes in this photo. It's a bad idea to use a flat brush for this because it becomes obvious that you painted over the image with a brush. It's better to use a soft brush instead. As you can see here, I painted over the sclere by accident when I only wanted to color the iris. We can fix this by clicking on this button in the toolbar. This enables the erase mode, turning the brush into an eraser. The keyboard shortcut for the eraser is the E key. It's a good idea to memorize or customize it since you'll need to use it often. By the way, if you don't like having to zoom out to see how your image looks, there is a way to have two views in Krita with different zoom levels. Now I've changed the color of both eyes, but I don't really like this color. How can we change the color quickly? If I select a different color, I'll have to carefully paint everything again. I'll have to repeat all my work so far. Thankfully, there is a way to reuse our work so far and only change the color. In the layers darker, there is a checkerboard icon next to every layer. This is a button that locks the alpha channel of the layer. The alpha channel is where the information about the transparency and opacity of the pixels is stored. While the alpha channel is locked, painting on the layer changes the color of the pixels but doesn't change the opacity of the pixels. This means that pixels that were transparent before painting will stay transparent after we paint over them. This makes our work much easier, but it can get easier than that. To make the entire layer a single color in Krita, we can go here in the menu bar and click on Edit, Fill with Foreground Color. Now everything is green. That's not what we want. However, if we lock the alpha first, and then we fill the entire layer with the foreground color, then what is going to happen is that the opaque pixels will change color, but the transparent pixels will remain transparent. The default keyboard shortcut for this is Shift plus Backspace. We can use it to quickly try different colors for a layer that is made entirely of a single color. This technique is also useful in illustration if you work with flat color layers. Using the color blend mode is easy and quick, but I generally don't recommend it. That's because it's very difficult to tweak the color of the image using it. The reason for this is that the color blend mode only changes the hue and saturation of the pixels. It doesn't change the luma. If we use the black color, for example, we'll see that the eyes turn gray. This is gray, not black. That's because black has zero saturation, so the eyes get a color that has zero saturation, but that still has the same luma as the color it had before. If we use white instead of gray, we get the same result. That's because the only difference between white and black is the luma, and that's the component that this blend mode doesn't change. This means it's not even possible to make the image certain colors using this method. Additionally, although we can try different colors quickly with the keyboard shortcut, it's still difficult to tell what that color is going to look like, or which color we need in order to make the image the way we want. That's why the method I recommend you to use is the filter method, instead of the blend mode method. In the layers darker, let's hide our color blend mode layer and add a new filter layer. The filter that we want is the HSV slash HSL adjustment. After the filter is added, we can right-click on the filter layer in the layers darker and click on properties to edit it. This filter lets us change the color of the image using various methods. A common beginner mistake to make is to use the default method to change the color of things. Let me show you why. You see here that we have a hue wheel. A wheel is a circle. It loops. Clicking on this specifies a shift of hue, which is how many degrees the wheel will be rotated. There are two problems with this hue wheel. The first problem is that if something is made out of multiple colors, we can't make it a single color with the wheel, since rotating one color also rotates the other color. The second problem is that rotating hues ends up inverting their luma. 
That's because the default method uses lightness as the third component instead of luma, and lightness isn't a good way to measure the brightness of pixels in a photo. For example, here we have red, which is a darker color, and yellow, which is a brighter color. If we rotate until red becomes cyan, which is a bright color, then yellow will become blue, which is a darker color. We can get rid of the second problem by changing the type of adjustment from hue, saturation, and lightness to hue, saturation, and luma. Then the luma is preserved instead of lightness. However, in order to get rid of the first problem, we need to change the type of adjustment to blue chroma, red chroma, and luma. This method works completely different from the hue wheel method. Instead of shifting the hue, we change the color of the image by making it more yellow or more blue, and more green or more red. This means that we can make the whole thing redder by moving the green red slider all the way to red. Observe that this doesn't make the whole image red. It only changes the color. Dark areas remain dark, and bright areas remain bright. What we want to do with this filter is move the sliders until the color of the eyes is the color that we want. It's worth noting that there some colors can only be achieved by changing the luma as well. After finding a color that looks good, the next thing we'll do is mask the filter so that it only applies to the eyes. First, click on the filter layer to make sure it's selected. While a filter layer is selected, the color wheel will become grayscale and you can paint directly on it with the brush tool and other painting tools to change its mask. The way it works is very simple. If you paint on it with black, it erases the effect of the filter on that area. Conversely, if you paint on it with white, it adds the effect to that area. In other words, white means opaque while black means transparent. Additionally, if you use the gray color, the opacity of the filter on those pixels will be 50%. Normally, the way you would work with a filter layer is like this. First, you go to the menu bar and click on Edit Clear. This fills the entire internal mask of the filter layer with the black color. Then you would select the white color and paint on the areas that you want to change the color of. The keyboard shortcut for clearing is the Delete key, by the way. However, we already have a layer with those areas already painted, so we don't need to do all of this again. We just need to find a way to take the opacity of this layer and send it to the other layer. Fortunately, there is a way to do this. First, we right-click on the layer with the opacity we want and click on Split Alpha, Alpha into Mask. This will create a transparency mask from the alpha channel of the layer. If we hide this transparency mask, we can see that the layer has become completely opaque. The transparency data is all gone. It was all transferred into the transparency mask. We can revert this by right-clicking on the transparency mask and clicking on Split Alpha, right as Alpha. What we're going to do is take the transparency mask and duplicate it so we can take the copy and write it to the filter layer. If you try to drag and drop the transparency mask to the filter layer, you'll notice that the result is completely different from what you want. For some reason, it makes most of the image transparent. Why does this happen? The reason for this is that filter layers have a copy blend mode by default. The copy blend mode doesn't use the transparency of the pixels to blend them. Instead, it just copies all the RGBA values of the pixels. This is necessary because some filters make pixels less opaque than before the filter is applied. This means is that if a pixel is transparent in a layer with the copy blend mode, the pixel becomes transparent when blended with the layers under it. Additionally, the way filter layers work is that the image of the filter layer is the result of applying the filter using its internal mask. That's why changing the internal mask of the filter doesn't create transparent pixels, but using a separate transparency mask does. Observe that we can change the blend mode of the filter layer to normal if we want, and then we'll get the correct result. Wait, this isn't the correct result. This isn't supposed to happen. This is a bug in Krita. Sometimes filters don't render correctly for some reason. This can usually be fixed by hiding and displaying layers under it to force a refresh. This is how it's supposed to look with the transparency mask applied. Only one eye is colored because we had already edited the internal mask of the filter layer so it only applied to the right eye. When we click on right alpha in the transparency mask, it's going to overwrite the internal mask of the filter layer and then both eyes will be red. Next, we're going to make the mask become black, which is going to require a different filter. First, let's select the pixels of the mask so we don't have to paint over all of it with the brush tool. In the tool box, click on the magic wand tool. This tool lets you select pixels of similar color by clicking on the canvas. If you click on the canvas normally, then every time you click will replace the current selection with a new selection. To expand the current selection instead of replacing it, hold the shift key and then click on the canvas. 
You can also subtract from the current selection by holding the Alt key instead. If you are on Linux Mint, Alt click may not work by default because someone thought it was a good idea to make Alt a system level hotkey. You can disable this in the Windows settings and then Alt click works, but seriously why is this Alt by default instead of the super key? The magic wand tool has some settings you can configure in the tool options darker. Changing the threshold setting makes it select a larger area because the pixels can have colors that are more different from the color you clicked on. After selecting the mask, the next step is to add a new filter layer to the layer stack. We'll use the same filter we used last time, except this time we are lowering the luma. In Krita, if we add a filter layer while some pixels are selected, the internal transparency mask of the filter layer is automatically created from the selected area, which can save time in some cases. Let's deselect everything to see how it looks. To do this, go to the menu bar and click on Select, Deselect. You'll see that the edges of the selected area look very sharp because the whole area that we wanted to select it wasn't selected. This is very common when using the Magic Wand tool. We can fix this by using the settings to grow and feather the selection in the Magic Wand settings. Now we can try selecting it again, but there is a problem. When we click on the canvas, the Magic Wand tool will use the pixels of the current layer to figure out which pixels to select. But because the current layer is the filter layer, the areas that have already been filtered look too different. Fortunately, there is a way to change which layer the Magic Wand tool uses to calculate the similar pixels. Let's right-click on our photo layer and change its color tag to blue. Then in Tool Options, change the reference setting from Current Layer to Tagged Layers and select the blue color. Now the Magic Wand tool will ignore the current layer and use the blue layer to figure out which pixels are similar. After we select an area, we can use the Shift Backspace Keyboard shortcut to fill it with the foreground color or use the Delete key to clear it. It's also possible to use the Bucket Fill tool the exact same way. Just go to the Tool Options of the Bucket Fill tool and configure it just like the Magic Wand tool. Naturally, you'll need to deselect everything before using it. Now you just need to click to fill. Personally, I prefer the magic wand method because you can see the area before filling it. It's possible to erase pixels with the bucket fill tool in Krita by enabling the eraser mode in the toolbar. In some areas, you may want to use a gray color to create a fade effect or to use a blurring or smudging brush. After finishing masking the mask area, the next thing we're going to do is add a new filter layer. The filter that we want this time is the Color Adjustment Curves Filter. This filter is used to adjust the brightness and contrast of a photo. We're going to use it to lower the contrast of dark colors, which will make the mask look better. Observe that this filter is affecting the entire image. How can we make this filter affect on all the area of the other filter? Start by selecting both filters and placing them into a group. Filter layers work by applying a filter to the layers below them, but they can't affect layers outside their group unless the group is in pass-through mode. Because this filter layer is at the bottom of the group, it's like it's not being applied to anything. We need to somehow put a copy of the photo under the filter to make it work. The way I recommended you to do this is to select the photo layer and create a clone layer of the photo layer. Then we drag and drop the clone into the group, placing it under the filters. Now the filters are applied to a clone of the original image. The problem is that this clone copies the entire photo, including the eyes in their original color. Fortunately, we can fix this very easily using techniques we've already learned about. Simply split the alpha of the filter layer that is already masked to the mask, then drag and drop the transparency mask so it applies to the entire group. Now the composite image has eyes with their color changed to red and the mask with its color changed to black. We can make some more adjustments to the color now that we can see how it looks like. This is how you change the color of parts of an image in Krita. You can use these same techniques to change the color of pretty much anything you want, including clothes, hair, objects, cars, and so on. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Krita tutorials.